character, but we will definitely have some Daredevil talk because he's this week's superhero spotlight. Select your hero. You run around dressed like a moron beating people up. It's not that simple and you know it. No, I don't know shit. <laughs> not about this. Okay, so you get these whatever you call them when you're a kid. How do you go from that to what you're doing now? It's an important question. How does Daredevil <laughs> Matt Murdock go from that to what he's doing now? Well, let's hear another Daredevil answer that. <laughs> my blindness seemed to enhance all my other senses. It was a kind of a natural radar, but it was so new it confused me. Then I met a mysterious man named Stick. He helped me to live up to the nickname that the kids used to tease me when they thought I was blind and helpless. The Daredevil. Now, I am confident, fearless. Man, that, that voice. A, yeah, his... I, I am an... What the hell was that? That was his casting on the Spider-Man yeah. animated oh. series. He's being played by one Edward Albert. Is that just him monologuing at Spider-Man? Um, it's actually him thinking to himself. Okay. Because he meets Peter Parker, and then Peter Parker's like, Well, wait, how did you get blind? Oh, this stuff happened. And then he's he's like, well, good night, Peter Parker. Peter Parker leaves, and he says, "If only I could have told you the rest yeah. of my story." There was and then a, he yeah. internally monologues to himself. There's a lot of the Spider-Man cartoon because it made sense because that mm-hmm. Spider-Man does that a lot in the comics, yeah. especially back then. So I I don't love all the Spider-Man animated series casting, and Daredevil is one of them. He sounds like he's eighty. Like yeah, he's he just... sounds old. And then uh, I remember when the the O three movie came out, uh, mm-hmm. they put out. Th- this is before they got wise to oh, people want to buy things in seasons, huh? Yeah, and it was just here's a DVD. DVD called Spider-Man versus Daredevil, mm-hmm. and it was like the three episodes or Just whatever. Three episodes, yeah. give us twenty bucks. Yeah, do it. Uh, but so yeah, we are talking about Daredevil one Matt Murdock, who just starred in the second season of his Netflix series, and he's been around for over fifty years. Wow. He first appeared in April nineteen sixty four in obviously Daredevil number one. He is a Silver Age creation of Marvel. He came right around the time Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Spider Man, Hulk, all those guys around. He is a he's a couple years into the big swing of things mm. in Silver Age, yeah. and he came to exist because Stan Lee was working with Bill Everett, who Bill Everett created the Submariner, and he was a major force in Golden Age Marvel. Mm -hmm. And this was going to be his newest project when he goes back to Marvel now that it's hot again. But as this is a story as told by Mark Evanier, who is a comic writer slash historian who also is a personal assistant to Jack Kirby and knows a ton of ancient Marvel history, Mm -hmm. says that uh, Bill Everett has what we they nicely refer to as a drinking problem, (laughs) and and so he gets out the first issue and then and he's gone and and replaced but. But it's also there's some talk of how much Jack Kirby is involved in Daredevil's creation mm. because Bill Everett was having problems and needed help. And uh, Jack Kirby couldn't remember how much he'd done on it, but he did help finish the book in time for publishing because Bill was late. But the credited creators are Stanley and Bill Everett. That's when he was created. And even in the first issue, they're like, I got blinded by radioactive stuff. It enhanced my... An isotope, I believe. And a radioactive isotope while stopping a man from getting run over by a truck. Mm-hmm. It was classic Silver Age Marvel stuff. Radioactivity... All nuclear. Goes to the brain, mm-hmm. and he gets superpowers. He's got the radar senses that basically give him sight, but he pretends to be blind the whole time. Isn't the- it cool that like we're seeing people, like blind people, emerge with what they call echolocation? Mm-hmm. And a couple of... I was, I was riding in a car with a bunch of educators talking about this, and like... I can't not talk about Daredevil for like nine minutes now. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're going to talk about... Because it really exists. There are kids who make clicking noises and can see objects through wow. hearing. I read this cracked article once that uh, the, a misconception in movies is when they want somebody to act blind in a movie. Mm-hmm. When they've hired blind people, they get around too well. They're like, no, no, no. You got to blind it up. Act like you can't <laughs> find stuff. He's like, but I do know where my chair is. Like, I'm not going to yeah, bump yeah. into stuff. Like, yeah. it's... It, but that's where Daredevil got started, and it's a classic, like, lame thing of justice is blind, and so yeah. am I. Because he always was, <laughs> from the beginning, he was a lawyer yeah. whose dad was a boxer who mm-hmm. was killed. He didn't take a dive in a fight, which is like the most 1940s <laughs> thing ever. And the guy who told him to take a d- dive in the fight was The Fixer. That was his name. Man, he should have should have guessed when he's named that. And he's like, why did I make deals with the Fixer? He wanted me to fix my fights. <laughs> yeah. Then the Fixer kills his father. Matt Murdock puts on a costume to chase after the Fixer. And in a very convenient 1960s way, the Fixer is so scared of Daredevil, he gets a heart attack oh, and yeah. dies in a, fall, in a way that is no fault of Matt Murdock. So <laughs> Matt Murdock didn't kill him. 
Uh, and that's when he had the yellow and red costume. They also establish the trio of supporting characters. Mm. Uh, that it's him, Karen Page, the secretary, and his law partner, Franklin Foggy Nelson. They were all there from the beginning. So huh. there wasn't. You, there's definitely going to be a lot of retrofitting. We talk about Daredevil later, but from there, he was pretty set with that stuff. And I will say that first six issues or so, mm-hmm. not very good. No, they really aren't. Honestly, like Dick Ayers takes over as artist, though the they also realize that uh, that costume sucks. It is one of the most stupidly action figurey Venture Brothers <laughs> outfits I have ever yeah. seen. And even like Wally Wood is an e- old EC artist who takes over for a little bit with issue seven, and that's when the red costume comes in. So mm. he has that yellow costume for six yeah. issues. Six. Yeah. That's it. Which even back then they're like, yeah, we got to get rid of this. Exactly. Not even and, thinking about toys and merchandise. Just like, yeah, this looks this stupid. Looks terrible let's get rid of the negaduck uh (laughs) now when you look back on those eventually own us anyway when you look back on those early daredevil comics they they aren't that compelling because he just felt like spider-man jr yeah Yeah, which is why i'm sure we'll go through this but Mm -hmm. uh, all the way through when i was a kid i just that's i thought that's what he was he's a Mm -hmm. lame-o not not as cool as spider-man nerd no and they also they play up his catholicism a little bit but it's not really a big deal but that is a core thing to daredevil which yeah. not to skip ahead to netflix but i do like that they keep that in the show like he's mm-hmm. a guilty catholic yeah. that is a big part of matt murdoch and you think of at least three big death scenes in the comics that occur like at a tabernacle matt murdoch should never go to church again. He's yeah. like, someone will die if i'm in this church i just can't i just can't be here sorry there's nobody in this church in 2016 except the person whose death you are responsible for <laughs> but in the early books he he, he sometimes would fight borrowed Spider-Man villains mm-hmm. like the Enforcer, but yeah. he also got some of his own early guys like Owl and Stilt Man. <laughs> the Owl, they kind of turned him into a, a good mob boss, and he also, he had Wolverine claws before they were cool. Mm-hmm. They weren't under his skin, though, but he did yeah. have them. Did he eventually inherit the Kingpin? Yeah, that, that'll happen in, like, the Brubaker years, mm-hmm. but yes. Yeah. And, uh, and well, Meanwhile, Stilt Man, he is such a joke. Like, he became a joke within Marvel, and he's just the guy of, like, oh, everybody beat me up i'm still man mm-hmm. yeah. he's, he's the first guy you fight in mega man 12 <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize that it was so early that his secret identity is compromised mm-hmm. in number 25 wow spider-man sends him a letter that accidentally re- reveals his secret identity dear daredevil <laughs> aka man <laughs> uh oh by the yes, way daisy i hate to make this all about spider-man like i do in any marvel one but the connection to spider-man begin like spider-man yeah. guest stars in issue 16 which is jo- drawn by by John Romita Sr., mm. who would then like graduate to Spider-Man once Steve Ditko left. John Romita had stopped doing super comics. He had done all these romance books, and he was like, I don't even want to draw anymore. And then once Stanley saw he was really good at Spider-Man, he's like, hey, this Steve Ditko guy hates me. I need a, <laughs> I need a new artist. Come over here. His secret identity gets compromised, and then he introduces a fake twin brother named Mike Murdoch. Oh where he God. puts contacts in his eyes so he doesn't look blind. It's like, no, I'm not mad at Mike. I can see stuff. I'm fun loving Mike. And I was actually Daredevil, but now a new guy's Daredevil. It's not me. See ya. You have God. multiple secret identities. Mike Murdoch will appear lots of times in, in over his history. And that's also when Karen Page figures out he's Daredevil and quits. And he's just kind of in flux for a while. Uh, in the early 70s, Jerry Conway takes over, moves Daredevil to San Francisco in issue 81. Oh. So he w- he'd been in San Francisco before, too. There's nothing Recently he was the there. And he was working was slash living. Black Widow then? He was working yeah. slash living with Black Widow, and it became Daredevil and Black Widow on the title card. It was their book together. And they've uh, Black Widow's had a number of relationships with superheroes. Two He's, unmarried adults living in sin. Well, funnily enough, I, uh, there was the fact that in the Comic Code Authority, they were not allowed to cohabitate if they were unmarried. Like Ugh. that was that was frowned upon by the old Comic Code Authority. So the way they got around that was uh, Jerry Conway said, "Well, okay, they live in the same building, but on different floors." And Black Widow has a guard that lives with Jesus her to make sure Christ. no hanky panky's going on. God, this like Puritan roots of this I country, know, it's, man. It's like so... you can vigilante justice beat people up all day, but you better get married before you hold hands. <laughs> it, hey, if it, if it makes sense with any character, it's the strong Catholic bent, which I can <laughs> barely relate to. R.I.P. Grandma. <laughs> uh, well, so then it's getting so unpopular. Daredevil isn't canceled, but it is brought down to bi-monthly, mm. which also happened to the X-Men in the 70s, too. Like, both were in print, but deemed unpopular enough to not 
do on a monthly schedule. Also, then uh, Marv Wolfman takes over. He introduces a character called the Bullseye in at one thirty one. Ah. So that's not a Frank Miller creation. He was inherited from uh, Marv Wolfman. And then another writer, Robert McKenzie, takes over in, in issue 153. He introduces Ben Urich, mm. another big part of Daredevil's uh, supporting cast. And he's also a Daily Bugle employee. This was something I didn't know, that he was a Daredevil creation. I thought he was another inherited Spider-Man character. Mm, yeah. But again, it's a thing of like, oh, he works in Spider-Man's thing, so he's like tangentially Spider-Man. It's another of these things like, separate Daredevil and Spider-Man. They're different dudes. Hilariously played by Joe Pantoliano, Joey Pants, oh, Joey in Pants. the Ben Affleck movie. McKenzie was not liked by his artist when he was working on it. And the artist complained to Jim Shooter, then editor-in-chief of Marvel, and said... I should be writing this book. Jim Shooter saw some talent in this young man. And so Frank Miller, artist of the book, takes over in issue 168, inked, and then would later just be fully drawn by Klaus Janssen. And this is the era of Daredevil became important again. Daredevil goes, so. goes from a book nearly canceled to becoming monthly again and one of Marvel's hottest properties. Uh, it started in issue 168, in January 1981 and not coincidentally 168 also introduced Frank Miller's biggest new character for Marvel I dare say Elektra mm -hmm. his college girlfriend turned ninja she opens the floodgate for all ninjas to come into the series sure, yeah, yeah. that's really Frank Miller's thing I think Frank Miller was really into uh, there's this long running cult Japanese film series called Zaruichi mm -hmm. the blind swordsman oh yeah and if you watch those, you can definitely see Miller's interpretation of Daredevil huh. in there. Daredevil, though not losing his Irish roots or his beating people up in Hell's Kitchen, he's also Zatoichi the Blind Samurai who has a code of honor and beats up evil ninjas. And it's just like so much Japanophile stuff comes into it. It also is where he introduces Stick, Daredevil's master, and the idea of the hand, the evil ninjas, who face the good ninjas run by Stick, the chaste. Mm -hmm. Who? Uh, that's a group I don't hear many names of, honestly. Like the until this is all circa like early eighties. This Frank is all Miller. early eighties. Wow. This is in his early eighties run on the book. It's yeah. In, prior to this, it's him having like lame Spider-Man adventures and like, yeah. fighting lame villains. Like. Yeah, mostly lame villains. Some organized crime stuff here and there. And Frank Miller takes it to a whole new level. Introduces mm -hmm. all these cool ninjas. Like his ninja stuff made them so cool in American comics. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created as a half as a joke response. The yeah. Foot Clan is the hand. The yeah. Foot, the hand. It's a. It was all a parody of them. It was so popular. Mm -hmm. It also changed, as was the style at the time. Completely changed Daredevil's origin. Retrofitted it just like you know Alan Moore was doing with say Swamp Thing. The, he has the important question of, well, wait, just getting radioactive stuff doesn't make you an awesome fighter <laughs> or know how to, yeah. like, hear everything and then tune it out. The, 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 he needs training for that. So he creates a character stick who basically is the classic grouchy old kung fu teacher, yeah. the Mr. Miyagi type before Mr. Miyagi existed to teach him stuff. He knocks him on the head like, don't get cocky, kid. Like, <laughs> And he's teaching him. And Stick's also blind. It's how he is the blind master who teaches him to be a blind fighter. And, I'm a blind fighter! <laughs> and it also introduces the idea that battling Jack Murdoch was not the awesome dude that mm. he was. He was a, a sad sack drunk who would occasionally hit Matt and just be like, ah, you fucking kid, you need to gotta learn something don't be like your old man and it introduced this dynamic that matt murdoch wants to get into fights mm -hmm. and his dad's like no be a nerd all i did was get into fights yeah. i want you reading books or i'll beat you up and <laughs> it also created that daredevil was his nickname bullies called him daredevil just like come on uh, what you can do daredevil man it's important to note that daredevils were very popular in the 70s it's true yes. so. evil knievel yeah, one of the biggest true. celebrities in the universe I'd say the early Frank Miller era was also defined by introducing the Kingpin. Like he, they just took Kingpin, a Spider-Man yeah, villain, yeah. and realized he makes much more sense totally. as a gangster boss in Daredevil's world. And it also culminates. One eighty one is the landmark issue because that is the death of Elektra, the famous death of Elektra cover. Also, though, Frank Miller is like walking Daredevil up to the line of murder. Like Daredevil knows Bullseye killed Elektra. He is out for blood. And he throws Bullseye off of a building may, with the plan of, like, this kills Bullseye. I have, mm. I have murdered a person. It doesn't kill Bullseye, and he's lucky for that. But that was how dark Miller took him. Mm -hmm. But the, So then he leaves the book in 191. He comes back 
for 227 for the Born Again story. Jesus, that's a long break, like three years? Yeah, it was a three-year break, so this is 1986, Mm -hmm. published at the same time as he's doing Dark Knight Returns, if you can believe it. At the same time as Dark Knight Returns is being published, he is monthly publishing the Born Again storyline as well. But if you read Dark Knight Returns... And look at what Daredevil now is. Yeah. It makes all the sense in the universe that comes from the same person's mind. Yeah, it's seen as Frank Miller gets famous on Daredevil, mm-hmm. and then DC hires him to be like, could you do Daredevil for Batman, though? Yeah. And so it's funny that Daredevil kind of, it's not really a Batman ripoff. I mean, he's also a mass vigilante sure. who doesn't have super strength or whatever. But the, the but, tonally, it still yeah. resonates as the same as Batman to me. Yeah. I mean, like, the night, the shadows, yeah. and the Catholicism, uh, the being, the getting the shit the kicked guilt. out of you constantly, mm-hmm. the sacrificing, like, that, yeah. those the, those are in both Miller's Batman and, and what Daredevil is from henceforth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, but Born Again is a major story, too, where they bring back Karen Page, who is a junkie prostitute at this point. I, you know, Frank Miller, he's so good with women. He really does so many <laughs> great things with female characters. Karen Page, as a junkie, sells out Daredevil's secret identity for money. That then comes back to Kingpin, who then uses that to destroy Matt Murdock's life. But not expose him, just destroy Mm -hmm. his life. He loses all of his money, his law practice, and he basically becomes a bum that Kingpin hopes will just die on the street. But Daredevil comes back from it, rebuilds his life. Mm -hmm. That's where he meets Nuke, who was a character in Jessica Jones. Well... The guy's like, I gotta have a red. Give me a red. Nah, man, you gotta just stick with blue for right now. Give the guy who red. looks like he'll play Leon Kennedy someday. <laughs> that guy totally should be Leon he Kennedy. He looks just like Leon, man. And it also kind of put Daredevil more with the superhero stuff. Captain America is a big figure in that book. And when Iron Man shows up, is they put it as like, gods fell from the sky. Yeah. Uh, but that series ended with Matt Murdock sort of getting his life back on track, but he is just a ground level dude working with Karen Page, who has now kicked the habit, and they're going to open a mission together, or they're just going to clean up uh, Hell's Kitchen from the streets. Like also around this time, I, I want to talk about Daredevil. Has, he's had a lot of friends. Uh, Spider Man has been his bro for amazing a very long time. friends. Damn it, I wanted to say it. Spider Man, I'd say, is his best super friend. Mm-hmm. Though surprisingly, they didn't know each other's secret identity until the eighties. Mm-hmm. That's when it became a need, a needed thing. It's a good thing about Daredevil is that kind of friend. He's guaranteed not to be anywhere else but Manhattan. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's. I mean, even just Hell's Kitchen. That's mm-hmm. something he's defined by. They mentioned it on the show too on Netflix. Uh, the show they're just like, "You're a New Yorker through and through. You've never even left this city." Yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. Like, it was interesting. The 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 O three Ben Affleck one. Mm-hmm. He makes a point to say they call it Clinton now. Yeah. Because I'm guessing in that time period they were trying to get rid of the Hell's Kitchen name. I mean, it doesn't sell property. Right? Yeah, it's but they, like I've they, said it repeatedly, having been there recently, Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen does not exist now mm, at all. Right in the no, Marvel yeah. universe, in yeah. the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe, it kind of does. But I yeah. mean, I walked through most of it yeah. for four years going to New York Comic Con from the same <laughs> hotel for like four years in a row. I think they just gave that up because the last time I was there. Hell's Kitchen was all over the place. Like the the term they're was. Owning it I now. think they're just like, yeah, who cares? Everybody. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think it was pejorative when they go, oh, I mean, received yeah. that. Nickname. How could it not be? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How could it not? So he he teamed up with other street level dudes like Luke Cage and Iron Fist, mm-hmm. and got his love hate relationship with the Punisher. As mm-hmm. we mentioned on the Super Spotlight, the Punisher, Frank Miller's interpretation of Punisher really reinvigorated the character too. At the same time, in the early eighties, mm-hmm. I, I guess not the birth and not like maybe maybe the, the heyday or at least the, the seeds of the heyday of these whole the, the street level the mar as oh, yeah. they they would become the Marvel Knights and all that. I mean but. the corner, yeah, the street level corner of Marvel. Frank Miller kind of just invented in the eighties mm-hmm. because continued to this day mm-hmm. with improvements and changes and all that. Not to say it's like exactly yeah. the same as it was thirty five years ago. Sure, but, but it, it's it's the basis for all these shows you're about to watch from yeah. Jessica. Well, not Jessica Jones. She doesn't come till way later. But yeah. Iron Fist, Luke Cage. She's Daredevil. a millennial. Kid. Yeah. The reason why there's they're superheroes in crime and noir stories instead mm-hmm. of superhero stories of bright shiny aliens in the middle of the day in New York. This does not happen in these. Frank series. Miller proved there was space for others yeah. in there. And Nocenti was the next major writer to take over. She ran the book for four and a half years. Wow. Though it's she's kind of forgotten in Daredevil mythos. I'd say one of her biggest ones was bringing in Typhoid Mary. She mm. created that character who was a, a retcon of Daredevil killing somebody because uh. in his original in Frank Miller's interpretation in his original hunt for the fixer Styx tells him like you can't hunt this guy down this is not what we do I do not sanction this and when he goes out looking for the fixer 
this he goes to like this uh, brothel and this woman's like hey stop it man and just reflexively he elbows her and she falls out a window and he's just like i killed this woman and then stick disowns him for killing that woman it later is revealed that that's typhoid mary wow. and she goes through a supervillain origin falling out the window she's not dead so right. that takes a death off the list for for ki- for daredevil so kids remember if you fall out a window you develop pyrokinetic powers yes I mean, and there's always a dumpster. It's New York. Who knows what's in that dumpster? <laughs> also, by the end of Anacenti's run, he finally puts Kingpin in jail, mm-hmm. and he gets back into his law practice with Foggy Nelson. And so Foggy's back as a supporting character. Also in 1993, that's when Frank Miller returned to the character one last time. He had also done a couple side Electra books, but mm-hmm. let's save that for an Electra spotlight someday. But uh, Electra came back to life. That's definitely worth knowing though but in 93 he writes the definitive daredevil origin man without fear which incorporates all the stuff he created in his books and plus what was in his original the first daredevil stories and make it all work as one tapestry and it was the big influence of the netflix season one Mm -hmm. when you see daredevil in his black costume or i mean his gym shorts whatever the is is sweats the entire time that's straight from Man Without Fear. Which he wore that more or less in that Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Yes, yeah. That's in, in 1989 was the first live action Daredevil, and uh, he it was the Trial of the Incredible Hulk, a movie. The Incredible Hulk show was over. The Bill Bixby show was over, but they were doing TV movies. And in this one, he was defended by Matt Murdock, who would change into Daredevil to fight the Kingpin with Incredible Hulk. This is an '89 with that with that but that black outfit that yeah. And then I guess Miller is like, yeah, that actually let let's keep that. Well, as far as Netflix, I mean, the Netflix show and his other movie shows, like his costume is hard to translate sure. to reality. It looks great. His bright red on the comic page yeah. looks amazing. I love his boots and his billy club on the side of his yeah. leg, all that stuff. The new season, I'm warming up to the newer take it on the suit. still sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, they've made it work as best as they can. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think they've done the best they could. Yeah, yeah. Man, it, I'm I making it, it darker, but it's still too edgy and modern and weird mm-hmm. in such a grounded <laughs> universe. Yeah. Uh, Nobody else is even wearing a costume. Then in 1994 came a very dumb story called Fall from Grace where Daredevil gets outed again as Matt Murdock. He then dis- fakes his death. That's the third time? Puts on a stupid black armored outfit. Oh my god, yeah. And yeah. takes on the role of Jack Batlin, is his name. <laughs> That's the... Goes undercover. Who like... could that be? And Spider-Man meets... It's also what Daredevil's called in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man even meets him uh, during this point because at this time Spider-Man's going through the clone saga while, yeah. it, while he's Jack Batlin. And Spider-Man says, no, you're Matt Murdock. He's like, Matt Murdock is dead and I am not him. <laughs> Stop asking me about it, and Spider-Man. Just How about this go. costume? It's the 90s, bro. Yeah, pretty 90s costume. But that gets dumped pretty fast. By 96, there's an underrated run by Carl Cassell which, and Joe Kelly, who both decide, we've had enough of the Frank Miller era of Daredevil. we got to make him happy-go-lucky again like he used to be. And so Carl Cassell had this great line about his view of Daredevil, which is, Spider-Man is Bugs Bunny, Daredevil is Daffy Duck. What? Meaning, when things would happen good for Spider Man, it goes worse for Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And so that is that, not the relationship that I derive from that analogy. You haven't yeah. watched enough cartoons. I'll, I'll, I'll catch up to speak. Oh, I know those cartoons, but it's like they, I, they, I think they are like so, foes that are. Well, <laughs> specifically the Chuck Jones version of Daffy Duck, I believe, is what he's referring to. There's so many. The, the, the bitterness of yes. Daffy Duck. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and also like the hard one stuff, like, but this was really way harder for me than yeah. Spider Man. Though that goes away from the Parker luck thing of like, no, Spider Man's thing is he has bad luck too. But anyway, I liked Cassell was at least saying, let's let's have Daredevil smile again. Let's not just have him be brooding and sad all the time. Mm. Uh, but that was short lived. That goes into 1998, where the series was Daredevil was doing bad again, and they decide for the first time ever, Daredevil will re- be rebooted at number one in the new Marvel Knights imprint. Kevin Smith is the writer. Joe Casada, the artist. And Karen Page is the dead one. She's she's killed off by Bullseye in the Guardian Devil story, which really does put Daredevil back on the map. It also is a very delayed book, because Kevin Smith yeah. is a slow writer. And honestly, I don't think it holds up much to the aging of time, especially because like, they introduced Mysterio as his villain. Again, oh, another yeah. fucking Spider-Man I, villain. Love that. I did love that saga. I would say that's where you start with Daredevil. Yeah, I mean, I would start with Man Without Fear, mm-hmm. but just to see his origin as pretty much seen on Netflix. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, I mean, the, honestly, the Frank Miller stuff's hard to approach now. Almost, I, I, I would say, Man Without Fear, and then perhaps Born Again. But you could also just read. Start because with Guardian. The Man. next era is when I got back into comics after basically the dark suit that you mentioned when yes. he was Jack Batlin is around when I got out of comics, mm-hmm. and basically ten years later, the next era of Marvel Knights, which when Bendis takes over with mm-hmm. the out story. Oh, yes. Well, that's that, good. So, that is when I think you could start with that, frankly. I do think Kevin Smith, at least as a Catholic or with a Catholic background, could bring that to Daredevil 2. It, it brought something interesting to it, but he was just doing like a cover of Frank Miller, honestly. David Mack did a quick storyline where he introduced the character Echo, which is yeah. basically what if Elektra was deaf. Yeah. Uh, Bob Gale, the writer of the Back to the Future films, did a neat little story. But then it really changes when Brian Michael Bendis takes over issue 26. And that's begins a whole new golden age for Daredevil. He is street level as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, Brian Michael Bendis had just been an indie comic writer and artist, though now he's just a writer. And he just did street level stories of theft and, and like, superness was not in there. Yeah. You children. I don't know. It's really good. Really good. And for the fourth time... The Daredevil gets his uh, unmasked again. And this time it sticks. Like, he is outed to newspapers. It's on the front cover of, like, no, this blind guy, he's Daredevil. And he's fighting it like a libel suit the yeah. entire time. He's in denial of it. He's in denial of it. He st- sticks in the closet. It-, it also has the White Tiger trial, which that's is a great, great yeah. story. It's one of my favorite Daredevil in court stories. That's where I got in. Was that exact? That's the precise story where I jumped mm-hmm. in. And I would just yeah. say the whole Ultimate Collection of Daredevil is great. They bring back Kingpin, and the Kingpin in that is the closest I'd say to Vincent D'Onofrio's yes. Kingpin. Yeah. It also, Daredevil kind of takes over Hell's Kitchen and becomes the new Kingpin for a point. Mm-hmm. And it ends with him being arrested, unmasked, uh-huh. and put in jail. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, where do you go from there? Yep. And unbelievably, Ed Brubaker takes over and continues the greatness. Yeah, takes that exact same story. It involves the Punisher and Black Widow almost right away. And, and Iron Fist, too. And like, Iron Fist. I, and, like, it just works so well. Like, all these characters that you're about to watch on Netflix, like, really that Bendis Brubaker saga of, like, eight years, mm-hmm. that's why we're getting these shows. Yeah. It's and, the same thing when Brubaker did Winter Soldier. It's like, they are laying the groundwork for things that people are going to be asking you, listener, like, oh, what's the <laughs> deal with this? And if somehow you haven't read those issues, like, that is absolutely without a doubt the Daredevil you should be reading. Yeah. And it's it's where Daredevil's in prison. It's also where he they introduced Lady Bullseye. Oh, yeah. And it's where they the hand comes back in a big way and mm. daredevil and kingpin are fighting over who's going to run the hand it, yeah. it goes to really interesting places it's then handed off to a story called shadowland which you should never ever read diggle and it's not good yeah andy diggle is the writer took over who was handed a really cool setup by brubaker yeah it <sighs> doesn't do very good like daredevil kills bullseye not that that sticks for even like a month right if you kill somebody around the hand, they don't stay dead. The, <laughs> hand, the hand is famous for resurrecting people. So they resurrected Dr. Octopus for Christ's sakes. Mm-hmm. Daredevil comes back from that. They pretty much, they very briefly like, oh, he's turned too evil. And then after six months, like, no, he's not evil. He's back. And let's pretend this didn't happen. Yeah. And he also joins the new Avengers briefly. Daredevil is rarely on teams, like very mm-hmm. rarely ever on teams. Uh, Mark Wade then took over for, and he brings back fun to Daredevil in a big yeah. way, without without denying the darkness in Daredevil's path. Yeah, but the first the first couple issues are just about him, are almost solely about Matt Murdock trying to conduct trials when the world thinks he's Daredevil. <laughs> yeah, it's great, and it, how he can consult uh, defendants to defend themselves. And everybody else is like, "You've gone crazy!" Like he's like, "I'm not crazy, but I just want to have fun now. I don't want to think about being a ninja." Like, yeah. it's, and and it also by the end of that he just accepts like okay you know what? yeah I am Daredevil that's me Daredevil mm-hmm. I'm this guy and then he even moves back to San Francisco and it had the Devil in the Bay storyline which is pretty good too the Mark Wade run just ended in the Marvel all new all different mm-hmm. era it is yet to be explained but now nobody once again knows who Daredevil is <laughs> and now he's back in New York he's working though for the district attorney's office so he's on the prosecution, not the defense. And it's a nice little run currently being written by Charles Soule, who has a law to ground, huh. so he's bringing even more legality to the series. As for his appearances and stuff, he was on the Spider-Man animated series, as we mentioned. He's appeared tons in other people's video games, 
but has only had one video game of his own ever released, mm. which was the GBA adaptation of his movie, which yeah. is not good. <laughs> he, he was to be in a PlayStation game, which yeah. had like footage released, yeah. but it was canceled. And speaking of which, 2003 was the Ben Affleck Daredevil film, which, God love him. I think it's... Uh, I think the writers and directors were doing the best they could in the machinery they were trapped in. Yeah. But the type of film they wanted to make was not the type of film the uh, Fox, I believe it was, yes. who produced it, wanted to make. It has so many mistakes in it, not least of which is an Evanescence soundtrack. Oh, it gave us Evanescence. And it just, it took all these things from the Frank Miller's books, including, like, straight up panels were just recreated. Yeah, it's it. weird. It's one of those things where that I am always scared of doing if I'm ever put in a position to create something. You can tell it's made by people who, who read the stuff and who care. read the stuff and and took the right lessons from it, but mm. then when they went to create their own thing, made something much worse. Yeah, and, and it's just, something that I would uh, that I would always fear that like, oh, you're going to give me the ball and I can run with it, and then I fuck it up. Mm. Like that's a, an actual fear of mine. <laughs> but is ben, I feel like that's the movie I might have made, yeah. and it scares me that I would have felt I was making all these decisions for the right reason and then it comes out and you're like oh no I think there was a lot of executive meddling though as seen oh. like we watched the R-rated cut yeah. which is a better film not a good it's not better. even a good the film the very existence of Elektra in the film is, is studio meddling yeah. it's, it's the first like blatant well we gotta get something else started too people mm -hmm. like it when Mary Jane kisses Spider-Man we need a romance in here and also yeah we'll spin it off with Jennifer Garner well, it just which they too much time to a plot line that doesn't worse. pay off unless yeah. you know there's going to be another movie Yes, yeah. And, and for a time I said, well, at least it brought it, it brought together Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner and they fell in love in it. But now they're just divorced and unhappily so. And Jennifer mm -hmm. Garner, this whole article about like, yeah, my divorce from Ben Affleck was not very good. And I'm not saying he cheated, but my eyes were open the entire time. Jesus. Like, Aria version was a little bit better. Uh, he's appeared in other games. I wanted to play real quickly his appearance in the Marvel Nemesis game. Like, let's hear some of his oh, uh, no. quotes here. I am judge, jury, and executioner. Nope. I'll make you a deal. I'll let you have the first move. Just imagine what I could do if I really tried. Justice is blunt. God, Johnny Ohm. Followed by him is Johnny Ohm. So many great characters created for Marvel Nemesis. God, what a what a what a that mess. has to be a shit thing one of these days. A shit show Bad. one of these days. I gotta play that GBA Daredevil game, man. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm that's so curious. Finally, there also I found out that Mark Evanier, who we mentioned earlier, he was a writer for cartoons in the 80s and in the 90s, and he had been working on a planned Daredevil cartoon, which would have also seen him have a, um, a seeing eye dog sidekick. Oh <laughs> my and, god! Uh, it was very close to being produced, but it was, wow. it was not an option. Yeah. And you remember wow. a, a while ago there was that sizzle reel when it was talked yes. about whether whether Marvel was going to get the rights back, and Fox had uh, a 70s pitch for Daredevil, mm -hmm. and there was. A light uh, what if it took place basically in the taxi driver yeah. 70s and in, in a dirtier Scorsese New York and it's a really it's a really interesting look and it's you don't a really great just, pitch idea yeah. I don't think Fox could have executed it yeah it's like well, and Fox right? has like 10 days to say we pull the trigger on this or Marvel gets the rights back and yeah. it was just a weird situation well this looks really cool I wonder if Fantastic yeah. Four <laughs> happened because Fox passed on that and let go of Daredevil and now Marvel's making a very good Daredevil thing without them maybe that's why they're like we can't let him daredevil us again. Hold on to Fantastic Four as long as we can. I'm sure they're going to try. And uh, that does bring us to the 2015 Daredevil Netflix series premiere. The second season just came out. Charlie Cox plays Daredevil, I think, quite well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes well, a little too much eye contact and British accent. <laughs> I mean, yes, when he makes no eye contact mm -hmm. and he's just looking down. A couple times I just tell myself, well, yeah, he knows, he knows where in front that person of him, is. And he's friendly to look at them. Yeah, but there's a difference in Styx performance. Styx does a better blind performance, mm -hmm. yes. But it has the best foggy ever, mm -hmm. I'd say. Yeah. No offense to Jean Favreau. I think he's... Who's, he's who wasn't fun. bad. No, he wasn't bad either. There's not even somebody you can say, like... Well, I would say Bullseye wasn't very good in the movie. He was he was real bad. He's not a good Bullseye, but that whatever that character was <laughs> is very entertaining. Uh, <laughs> Colin Farrell, he did. yes, uh, yeah. like his coat makes snake he noises. No punches. Part. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, Charlie Cox is good. It also reestablishes Karen Page as a major character. She is almost she technically is in the 2003 movie, but is almost nobody in it. Like you wouldn't know she was Karen Page. You don't even say like, hey, thanks, Karen. 
Uh, <laughs> but, it, but it started a whole new era of Marvel TV stuff. It and did. that has led to a second season of it, Jessica Jones, and a second season of that. Mm-hmm. Technically, it was just supposed to go Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Defenders. then the Defender Show. Mm-hmm. And now... Will Defenders ever happen? Because they're just going to keep having multiple seasons of every show. That seems pretty insane at yeah. this point. It, well, I think they realize, like, oh, we can if we have four successful TV series, that's better that's yeah. than, yeah. Uh, than uh, making some TV weird series. plan to be a TV Avengers. Like, yeah. th- that that's like if I was Netflix, yeah, that should be your theatrical release, like yeah. a, a two hour yeah. movie featuring all of your TV characters, because yeah. they they are not sharing the MCU very well. Yeah. No, um, there's even been quotes of of Marvel filmmakers saying. Well, technically, TV and film are different divisions, yeah. so we can't just do. It. I was like, "This was what was this was the thing you weren't supposed to happen." This, yeah, because you all own it, you're not having to negotiate with Fox. This should be easy. I think it's just a payment issue. Like, yeah. like whatever Chris Hemsworth's contract is doesn't dictate anything on Jessica Jones. Well, and, and oppositely, it could be like, well, if you want Charlie Cox to be in Avengers, you got to pay eighty. You got to yeah, pay, pay, pay more. I think yeah. that's the most likely a small cameo from the TV universe. I'd be up for that. Either way, it's really it's really great, and I. Just watching season two, I could not stop saying, this is a Disney property. Oh, it's a drill going through a foot, and my girlfriend <laughs> has left the room. <laughs> and I, all these worries we had that uh, Disney would not be true to these characters, it's even more true than the comics would be, because it's violent. They just they, they don't show titties, scenes they don't say yeah. fuck, but they do everything else you could possibly do to get a rated, like an R rating. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so that is Daredevil. Here's to another 50 years of that guilty, guilty Catholic. And that is our superhero spotlight. Select your hero. 